In this nicely done vignette, we're going to be showing what to do with a difficult anastomosis. So this is a patient with diverticulitis. We did our proximal resection. Here we're doing our distal resection right at the upper third of the rectum using vessel seal extend. We extracted the specimen, we removed the alexis, and here we're introducing the anvil to the circular stapler. In preparation for the anastomosis on the cut edge of the left colon, we're putting in our purse string suture. We use a 3-0 V-lock barb suture. We're doing the dolphin in and out technique loop it, and then introduce the anvil. Now here, we're gonna tighten the anvil, and we like to put an endo loop to secure it even more. Now we turn our attention down to the rectal cuff, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna over -sew the rectal cuff, again, with a 3-0 V-lock suture. There we're having the assistant put in the stapler that sometimes helps bring out the rectal cuff to gain access. And once we go ahead and close the rectal cuff around the spike of the stapler, we go back to the left colon. And this is really the part that I wanted to highlight. I just don't like the way that looks. I think we've all been there before. There's diverticular disease. And even once we resect the acute diverticulitis portion, we have to make sure we have a smooth edge on the anvil. And it, you just can't trust it. See, it looked okay, but as we're taking down the fat and really dissecting, we see a small diverticulum right there on the edge. And as we go to the other side, we see a much larger diverticulum. You really never know, is there just fat there or is there a diverticulum that's gonna be right in the anastomosis which would portend a higher failure rate? So what we do in these cases is we dissect out the diverticulum very clearly. There it is right there. There's a smaller one right there. And then we simply take the scissor and cut it. So the smaller diverticulum is cut there. Here's the larger one. Again, this would be right in the anastomosis and I like to just cut it right out. You gotta be careful to take the specimen out right away. You don't wanna leave that in. And now because we have our V-lock still intact, I'd like to leave it intact, we just basically do another purse string, engaging the edges of where we cut the tissue, making sure that we pull it all in. That's getting around the larger defect. And now we're gonna take the same suture and make sure we get the smaller uh, cut diverticulum edges and we want to make sure we put that all in close to the neck of the anvil so it's all going to be in the chamber of the circular stapler. I think this is well worth it. Again, when you have a, a tissue that's bunched up against the anvil and you do your anastomosis, you just don't know what's in there. And to me, that's where the failures come. Now, I'm observing this again. It looks really good where we put in the large uh, diverticulum, but there's still some out pouching. And so we do another endo loop just to get it more secure to make sure everything is brought in very tight around the neck of the anvil right there. So our final examination, now that looks like a really good uh, area on that anvil. We connect it to the rectum and we have our nice anastomosis. This was our nicely done series showing how we deal with diverticulum at the anastomosis.